Welcome to chapter 10 of the Shite Guide to Provo, an unofficial series about the history of Amsterdam's 1960s counterculture revolution. Vote Provo, you'll laugh your head off. There are no fixed points for this youth generation. Do we can like a rope bomb? Poking fun at Compass City Fathers. We are provoking people to think about themselves and their future. So one of the more bizarre aspects of the entire Provo saga is that all, like, almost every single one of their various causes are still relevant today, perhaps even more so. You've got things like uh, the antiquated drug laws, sexual freedoms, poisonous traffic and countless others. So the Provo's white plans zeroed in on several highly solvable problems which remain unsolved today solely because of the late stage capitalist hellscape in which we are trapped and being slowly crushed to death. But perhaps no issue is as immediately pressing for our generation as housing. Unless drastic action is taken, generation rent, that's us, we are collectively fucked destined to live out our last days of life working to pay off the insatiable bloodlust of the landlords. But there is a glimmer of hope. Do you mind? 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 Do you mind if I step inside? That's a nice house. Very nice. Is it empty? Uh -huh. Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you waiting for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate to buy you when the prices rise? That's a nice house. Very nice. Is it empty? Uh -huh. Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you waiting for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate to buy you when the prices rise? Oh. The provosts have been down this road before, and they took direct action to attack the rancid system when they proposed the White House plan and their rage was turned on this building right here on Dam Square the Royal Palace there goes the neighborhood, here come the provos Working for the man is a no-no Staying on the low-low, playing with the popo. -po. When you're with the crew, you're never gonna roll so low Ooh. There goes the neighborhood, here come the provos Trying to give the world back its mojo The people with no hope need to go loco Here come the provos to fuck up the whole show This is a provo thing in the early 1960s, Amsterdam, just like cities all over Europe, was tasked with rebuilding after the war and converting the infrastructure to optimize a new form of consumerist capitalism. Detailed plans were drawn up to demolish huge swathes of the city centre to make way for huge imposing glass and concrete shite. And so the provost brought out the White House plan. There is a house in Holland and nobody lives there. It stands in the damn square in the heart of Amsterdam as a symbol of the housing shortage. In Amsterdam, there are thousands of empty houses around the canals and in the Jordan, the city's bastion of freedom. Your house is your pleasure temple. You have a right to your own house, a fair share of the community's housing. No house in the magic center can be allowed to be demolished if it is still being occupied. New Amsterdam, New Babylon, the White House plan workshop has taken the following steps. One, declaring the palace on the dam the collective class temple of the magic center. Two, publishing every week a list of addresses of empty houses. Three, painting the doors of empty houses white to indicate that anybody can use them. Four, mobilize the young people to combat the housing shortage. In short, save a building, occupy a building, just for fun. So I'm here on a uh, Kinkerstadt in uh, West Amsterdam. And what we have here is a freshly cracked building. So um, they basically just said that uh, the building's been cracked today. And uh, we'll have a paper of what the crack is. So it's uh, a no laundress. And it's been cracked by uh, Mokum Cracked. So what the scenario is, when they 
uh, basically crack a building like this. So this is a, a laundrette. They said it's been empty for two years. So essentially during the housing crisis, there's buildings that are empty. Hello, a lot of people waving here. Uh, there's buildings that are empty with the rent going up and everything around the city. It's a, it's a major issue. So this gap is full up of, uh, I guess you'd call them uh, cracktivists maybe. Pretty cool. Crack the stad basically means uh, squat the city. The provost began squatting houses as political policy. They thought, why should vulture funds and the, the ultra-rich get to commodify the concept of living indoors like a human? Why should these scumbags be allowed to artificially cause a housing crisis by buying up mass amounts of houses and then holding them ransom, keeping them empty while the prices rise and then selling them to maximize profits, enslaving the working classes in their inflated mortgages. So the provost believed in the 60s that it was a crime against humanity then, just like it is now. And the, the provost knew that the politicians would never fix this issue because politicians by their very nature would never know the horror of homelessness and only exist to serve themselves. So they said, fuck this, we're kicking in the door and you can fucking drag us out if the profit means that much to you. And it was then that the era of squatting began. It was basically the age of the cracker. Okay class, let's discuss what's common to the monarchy The whole lot live lavish and pretend to live modestly Whoring in their palaces and hoarding their properties They're locking all the doors while the poor live in poverty And it is not a bug and it's not an anomaly Because there is no justice and there's no equality When some live in luxury with gold and mahogany With others at the mercy of the gods of the economy Monomy, I'm sorry for the monomy This social dichotomy is old school robbery It got me kicking in the door and seizing the property The flat to the mansion, the palace to the colony Nice house! Is it empty? Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you in it for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate to buy you when the prices rise That's a nice house! Is it empty? Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you in it for the profit? For a transnational conglomerate to buy when the prices rise. <laughs> Another day, another squat, another eviction. So um, this building was squatted about, I think four days ago, and they went public yesterday. So uh, the, uh, the copper roomies are in with uh, their battens and their shields drawn. So um, yeah, man. This cop's filming me now. <laughs> So basically you can see uh, how much of an issue this is for the city. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven paddy wagons, the riot police, lads with shields. What we're looking at is um, it's an abandoned hotel, Hotel Rembrandt. And it hasn't, um, uh, according to the students who are squatting it, um, it hasn't been used for over a year. And uh, at the moment the housing crisis is at absolute peak levels there's students sleeping in tents and fucking camping sites so um the reasoning of the squatters of the crackers is no one's fucking living here it's completely empty it could be they, they have no idea when this hotel whatever this company or the owners are going to actually do something with the hotel so they said if it's empty we're going to chill in there we live inside Okay class, let's get this housing crisis simplified The landlords are lauded, the peasants are vilified If you do not agree that everybody has the right to live in sight Then how can you believe that your society is civilized? Striving for a simple life 
heard of my cynic size The public get fucked when the housing is privatized We know the rich are gonna let us drown when the ship arrives But you gotta remember One man's rent is another man's passive income Should we hang the landlords? Are they the disease or just a massive symptom? Another day in the cage A slave to the wage and a vassal to the system Avenge every victim Take back every castle in the kingdom That's a nice house Is it empty? Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you waiting for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate To buy you when the prices rise That's a nice house Is it empty? Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you waiting for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate To buy you when the prices rise so if you've ever been at a concert in Amsterdam city centre, there's a pretty high chance it was either in uh, the Melkweg or the Paradiso, two clubs that began their life as uh, basically as illegal squats. So the, uh, the Melkweg here was squatted in 1970 by uh, a group of artists who turned it into a, a music and cultural centre, which it still is to this day. And it's looking pretty lovely. But uh, the most famous music venue in the city is surely Paradiso, which was squatted during the Provo era of 1967. And here I am, live at the scene, 55 years too late at the lovely Paradiso. So it began its life as a um, basically a church until 1965 when um, it fell into disuse and in 1967 in the, the summer of love at the rising peak of the counterculture explosion when Amsterdam was being established worldwide as the magic center the, uh, the city leaders were planning to turn it into uh, basically turn this entire plot here into some fucking wanky hotel to, uh, to cash in on the new tourist boom which was occurring in no small part due to, uh, to the Provo movement. But then this building here, a big dirty group of crackers took exemption to this and they, they essentially broke into the building to squat it. So the police came down hard on them and uh, evicted them a couple of times and the situation got pretty feckin' spicy indeed. But um, yeah, the evictions weren't enough. Let's meet some more legends. Willem de Ridder and Koos Vaart, two of a group of young rebels who led the squad to victory. Willem de Ridder was the king of the new pop world, breaking down doors and setting off cultural bombs with his sordid media. A barometer of the youth movement, he was a disc jockey of scandalous radio programs, a publisher of explicit magazines, a broadcaster of shocking TV shows and an organizer of legendary pop events. And it was in this capacity that he was to promote the importance of a cultural space for the youth. Koos Vaart was an OG cannabis activist who would help lead the charge towards the Dutch tolerance policy. He was an editor of Willem's revolutionary music magazine Hit Week and was an organizer of music and theater events throughout the city. Along with provosts like Peter Bronckhorst, they began holding even bigger cultural events in the new squat, attracting massive amounts of revelers. They persisted in pursuing the municipality to allow them to continue the crack and eventually the squat got the go-ahead to serve as a cultural Center to the youth. On March 30th, 1968, the new venue officially opened with the name of Paradiso, the Cosmic Relaxation Center. And uh, the venue immediately sort of became the site of legendary events, including Pink Floyd on the same year it opened. And uh, the local alternative art world found a new fulcrum in which it could swing. But Paradiso also had wide-ranging effects on society. Coast Vart was central to the tolerance campaign and was responsible for many hash-related hijinks, including the weekly reading out of the stock market prices of local hash and weed on the radio. Sure enough, hash began to be sold to the hippies inside the venue and arrests and raids followed. But eventually, it just became too much of a hassle for the cops to constantly waste time on an unsolvable task and so a policy of tolerance for soft drugs within Paradiso began. Hash was sold openly and this also gave a confidence boost to other cultural rebels who pushed even harder against the law. Standing here decades later, places like Paradiso are the, the concrete proof 
that uh, you know, political squatting can benefit a society that has forsaken the needs of workers in the elite's thirst for profits. But the fight isn't over. In fact, it's just getting started. Provo's original founders, Rule Van Down and Rob Stolk, set up new organizations to fight the destruction of the city and push for the ideals of New Babylon. Rule Van Down set up the Kabouters, a Provo West group who focused on sustainability and squatting, while Rob Stolk set up the Von Bureau de Clacker and published a manual for squatting. The movement set in motion by Provo was evolving and heating up, eventually exploding into massive pitched battles in the streets between police and crackers, and the city spent decades as a battleground between the forces of capitalism and culture, a battle which continues to this day. So here on Spoustrat, just up from the Spo, was once the core of the, the squatting community in Amsterdam, with the remaining building here, the, uh, the Vrankrijk still standing and doing groovy shit to this day. On uh, the opposite side here, uh, once stood the Snake House, the uh, Slangepand, or however you pronounce it, which was a couple of years ago uh, cleared of the squatters that were, uh, had been squatting the place and it was developed into fucking half million euro apartments. So this was basically a uh, ground zero for the, uh, the squatting community in all of Amsterdam. But uh, yeah, the city didn't like that. So they started knocking down some of the buildings here. Basically decades of cultural events are raised in the pursuit of maximum profits. Gone. Still lacquer. Provo may not have succeeded in their quest for housing as a human right, but their White House plans lit the spark that set off a 50-year-long simmering fire which occasionally bursts forth into violence. And the battle still continues to this day. In fact, at this moment in time, in response to the current housing crisis which is currently tearing apart the very fabric of society all across Europe, squatting is going through not just a resurgence in Amsterdam, but a renaissance. And if you think that the squatters are the criminals here, rather than the faceless spectres of faceless greed, then I don't know what to tell you. You're already lost. It's clear none of our governments give a flying fuck about whether we live indoors or not. So maybe it's time to consider squatting an empty building in your neighborhood. Just ask yourself, what would the provost do? Nice house. Very nice. Is it empty? Uh -huh. Do you mind if I step inside? What? Or are you waiting for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate to buy it when the price is right. That's, That's a nice, nice house. Very nice. Is it empty? Uh -huh. Do you mind if I step inside? Or are you waiting for the profit? Waiting for a transnational conglomerate to buy it when the price is right. Yes, oh, say that,